So we are going to solve the next paper on 2014 set 2. Uh, this paper had many problems on structure analysis, but those were like direct problems. I've chosen four problems to explain you the uh, concept of structure analysis, how to solve the problem. So the very first problem was on moment distribution other itself. Actually, the question said that taking the advantage of symmetry, the magnitude of bending moment at P is, and in bracket it was written to solve it preferably by moment distribution. Actually, the best method right now, even if it is not set, it's moment distribution method. And uh, I've given you the concepts of moment distribution method in the video lectures. Here I'm going to tell you about the concept of symmetry. Now, whenever the axis of symmetry passes through the column, you can just take like this, even the column on this portion is not required. So, you can take like this as uh, 24 kN per meter and 4i, 8 meter, i and 6 meter. If, if the column is like this, suppose like this and uh, suppose even if the column is like this, the structure is like this. In this case, if you want to apply the concept of symmetry and you consider, suppose this was i and this was some 6 meter, if you want to apply the concept of symmetry, then you will consider like this and this i, you will make it as i by 2. So there is a long theory behind this, but right now try to understand that whenever the axial symmetry passes through the column, you take the i as it is, whereas the axial symmetry if you are considering, which is not passing through the column, you have to divide, you have to take half the moment of inertia of the actual structure or actual beam. So right now our axial symmetry passes through the column, so we are just interested in this. Now, if this is a problem, the first step in moment distribution is the distribution factors. So joint, member, stiffness, summation of stiffness and distribution factor. So I have this joint as A, B and let this be P. Now the joint B is B A and B P. What is the stiffness for this? I by 6. What is the stiffness for this? 4 I by 8. So what is the sum of the stiffness? 1 by 6 plus 1 by 2. You have 2 I by 3. So 1 by 6 divided by 2 by 3 gives you 1 by 4 here and this has to be 4 by 8 divided by 2 by 3 that is 3 by 4. Keep a note that the sum of this should be 1.0. Now after finding out this, uh, if I can erase this question, if you have noted on this, the next thing I am just doing is I am trying to uh, directly calculate the moments now. Now what do I do in moment distribution is, I always try to expand this like this and I will write the distribution factors here what was the distribution factor for BA? it was 1 by 4 here so I will write 1 by 4 here and 3 by 4 here now what is the uh, fixed time moment here? 24 into 8 square by 12 double eight square by 12 right? minus 128 I will write here plus 128 I will write here now if you see this what do we do in moment distribution? Very carefully you look at, look, look at this point. At minus 128 you have an unbalanced moment acting at this joint. What do you do with this? You take minus 128, you multiply it by a minus sign. So why? Because you want to balance this. So you got plus 128. Now this 128 will be shared to this beam, so this column and this beam based on the distribution factor. So you first multiply it by 3 by 4. That gives you 96 and then you multiply 128 by 1 by 4 that gives you 32 so here I write 96 and for this column I will write 32 right since this end is fixed this will carry over half its value remember the concept of far end fixed and the near end hinge a moment is applied of 32 how much will be transferred? 32 by 2 so that's what I am writing here 32 by 2 gives me 60. Actually, I am not interested in this right now. So, this is 96, right? So, what if this is 96, this will be transferred here. 96 by 2, that is 48. Agree? Now, if I want to further solve it, there is no more distribution in this case, right? Because this end is a fixed end. So, what is the sum of 128 and 48? It's 176. Is it not the question is asking for? It is asking you the moment at P which is nothing but 176. So your answer is 176. Option number C. Okay. Coming to the next problem. 
The next problem is more of an uh, easy problem in which it is asked to uh, just find the axial load in the member PQ. Now, if you consider the axial load in the member PQ, you see here you have a fixed time here and I consider the free body of it. Now, if this is my 160 here, if this is 160 and here this is R. Agree? Here I have R value and here I have 160. Now, if this deflects like this and this deflects like this, this deflection should be 0. So if I equate these two, if I equate these two, will I again get the relation between R, the, the, the function with respect, the, the equation which has R in it, that R itself is the axial load for PQ and that's what is asked. So my aim is now to find the R. Let me just uh, do it one by one to explain it to you. So I'll take this first as this for my simplicity I'm taking it's like rotated. I have 160 kN acting over here. I am interested in the deflection over this location. What, what do I do? I take the MAT theorem. So what is this value? 160 into 2 is 320. What is the deflection at end R? It is 1 by 2 into 320 into 2 into 2 by 3 of 2 plus 2, right? So this gives me 0 0.5 into 320 into 2 into 4 by 3 plus 2. That gives you 1066.67. Now, this is a deflection into this. Also, I said that there is R node which causes a deflection, right? So in this case, uh, I'll do it here. In this case, my MAT theorem will be applied like this is R and I have here. So now the total span is 4 meter. So I have 4 R, right? R into 4. So now the deflection value for me is 1 by 2 into 4 R into 4. That is your area into 2 by 3 of 4. So this gives you uh, 4 to the 8. 2 gets cancelled with this 2 8 into 8 divided by 3 that gives you 21.33 R. This has to be equated with 1066.67. So your answer comes out to be 50. So your answer is 50 kN is the axial load for the member PQ. I hope there is no doubt in this. So the next problem. The next problem is even simpler. In this problem, uh, it is just a pulley given, there is a fixed beam and there is a cable connecting a pulley at this end which is having a hanging load of 50 kN. So let me just simplify the diagram because everything is uh, about how to play with the problem. So if you are, this is your problem and it's like this, it's like this, you have a hanging load of 50 kN. If this is hanging, this is transferring the load here, 50 kN and this is your 0.2 meter by 0.2 meter of beam and having a span of 3 meter. Now, if this is your problem, you can simply tell what is, first let us go step by step. We need everything at point Q. What is the moment at Q? What is the bending moment at Q? Obviously, 50 into 3. So, you have 150. What is the shear force at Q? 50 kN. Right? And what is the axial force at Q? Axial force will be 50 is your axial load. So 50, they are asking the axial stress at P. So that is 0.2 into 0.2. This will give you answer in kN per meter square. So that is the question number 3. The last problem is a quite complicated one. So I hope there is no doubt in these three problems. I'll just erase this portion. Okay. Let's see the last problem. In the last problem, it is said that there is a beam which is having depth of 250 mm. Now, uh, generally it won't happen in case of such shallow beams, but in case of deep beams having depth of more or more than 1 meters to 2 meters, in that cases they can happen that the temperature above the beam 
is different in the temperature below the beam. Also, this could happen in case of RCC structures when the beam portion, half of the beam is inside the building and half of the beam portion is projecting outside the building. In such cases, the outside temperature could be more whereas the inside temperature subjected to air conditioning and all, so it could be quite cooler. So in those cases, this could be a condition. However, the deflection resulting due to temperature is very small compared to the deflection resulting to external loading and we neglect these things in uh, design and analysis. But uh, so uh, for time being, let's try to understand like how with this concept you can estimate the deflection. So you have a beam of 3 meters which is having 36 and 72 degree Celsius top and bottom temperature. The coefficient of thermal expansion is given as this. So please note that RCC has equal coefficient of expansion for both steel and concrete. So it's uh, uh, irre irrelevant to tell for specific steel or concrete. Then uh, the deflection of beam at the mid span due to the temperature gradient test. So now in this problem nothing is given. In order to solve this problem, one assumption is made. The assumption is that the deflection of the beam will be of uniform curvature. So if I say that this is my deflected shape and I can complete this circle like this. So I'm making an assumption that the deflection will be a uniform curvature that can only happen in case of pure bending. When the beam is subjected to only bending, no shear force, the deflected shape is always of uniform curvature. So right now, so this is your uh, beam, this is your delta, I can say this is 2R. If this is 2R, can I say this is 2R minus delta? Now, this total span is L, you have this as L by 2 and this as L by 2. Can I write like this 2R minus, okay let this be also the same then, otherwise. So 2R minus delta into delta is equal to L by 2 into L by 2. So you have 2R delta minus del square is equal to L square by 4. Delta is a small value, so delta square also will be a very small value. So your delta value is L square upon eta. Now, is L given? Yes. 8 is known. But is R given? No. R is not known. So again, to know R, you have to apply another concept. To estimate R, I can say, uh, I'll use this portion now. So, I have my circle like this. I'm saying this total length is right now L. Now, due to temperature, it started increasing and what is the strain developed due to this? I can say L plus L alpha delta T. I can say like this. Now, if this is R, I can say the increase in curvature is R plus H. Again, here I can apply the circle property which is L upon L plus L alpha delta T is equal to R upon R plus H. I am interested to find R. So let's uh, let's inverse it right now first. L plus L alpha delta T upon L is equal to R plus H upon R. If you solve this, you can uh, just uh, separate out the terms. 1 plus L cancel alpha delta T. Right? 1 plus alpha delta T is equal to 1 plus h by r ok 1 1 cancel alpha delta t upon h is equal to 1 by r I got this now if I substitute this 1 by r back here I get delta is equal to l square upon 8 into alpha delta t upon h finally my deflection formula is l square alpha delta t upon 8h there is also an IES problem uh, asked or just the formula but in this gate problem they are asking you the value so for that you know L your L is 3 meters your alpha value is 1.5 into 10 to minus 5 delta T will be the difference in temperature so you have to subtract 72 and 36 8 you know and H is the depth of the beam so this way you can substitute the values and find the answer and uh, this completes the problems on 2014 set 2 the next video will be on gate 2013 questions on structures